Welcome to the June 2023 Poetry Corner. I am Delano Capru, and I'm, I'm very happy to be with you today. And so let's turn our attention to the process of creativity and particularly how that plays a role in writing in general. When asked about her creative process, contemporary writer Amy Tan noted, and I quote, stories push you and you have to go deeper. You have to, in some sense, survive, especially emotionally. When people go through great change, great happiness, great trauma, big questions emerge, and that's when you make discoveries. With her depth insight, Amy Tan sets us flowing in this month's Poetry Corner. And as we find ourselves on this charming corner in Brooklyn, selling forth into what promises to be yet another glorious summer, it seems rather fitting we should turn our attention once again to Walt Whitman, who walked these streets and transformed what he saw and heard as the procreant urge of the world into his song, into his barbaric yawp of his days in New York. One of the most overlooked readings in literature is Walt Whitman's preface to the 1855 edition of Leaves of Grass. And this preface, I will just add before getting on with it, is particularly instructive because within it, Whitman himself gives us the clues we need to read his poem. As Whitman writes, all beauty comes from beautiful blood and a beautiful brain. If the greatness are in conjunction in man or woman, it is enough. The fact will prevail through the universe, but the gaggery and guilt of a million years will not prevail. Who troubles himself about his ornaments or fluency is lost. This is what you shall do. Love the earth and sun and the animals. Despise riches. Give alms to everyone who asks. Stand up for the stupid and crazy. Devote your income and labor to others. Hate tyrants. Argue not concerning God. Have patience and indulgence toward the people. Take off your hat to nothing known or unknown or to any man or any number of men. Go freely with powerful, uneducated persons and with the young and with the mothers of families. Read these leaves in the open air of every season of every year of your life. Re-examine all you have been told at school or church or in any book. Dismiss whatever insults your soul and your very flesh shall be a great poem and have the richest fluency, not only in its words, but in the silent lines of its lips and face and between the lashes of your eyes and in every motion and joint of your body. The poet shall not spend his time in unneeded work. He shall know that the ground is always ready and plowed and manured. Others may not know it, but he shall. He shall go directly to the creation. His trust shall master the trust of everything he touches and shall master all attachment. Many years ago as an undergraduate, um, I was struggling to understand Walt Whitman. And I had a professor at Columbia who said, you have to flow with him. <laughs> and um, flow isn't, isn't necessarily the most analytical of critical terms that one may possess as a scholar of literature but it's a very human endeavor to flow with something, to listen, to let it wash over you. And along the way, there are many wonderful things here that Whitman is conveying to us about the artistic process. The first is the need to be authentic. And this comes up in that line 
in this preface, but the gaggery and guilt of a million years will not prevail. Who troubles himself about his ornaments or fluency is lost. So essentially as a writer, Whitman is telling us to get on with it, to own your story and to write it as it comes to you. One too wonders about this litany of things that we shall do. Because on the one hand, this is very contradictory to Walt Whitman as an artist. He was, he was very much about the idea of, of a free and independent spirit. And this is one of the few times in Leaves of Grass in which we are, we are told to do something. And if one were to follow these commandments, shall we say, love the earth and the sun and the animals, despise riches, et cetera, et cetera, one wonders, what does this living look like? And I can only help but to think that if these rules were followed or this invitation was accepted, one might kind of have a life of being a true individual, which is precisely what Whitman was going for um, as, as an as a, as a American romantic poet in the 19th century. And so just to put a finer point onto this, this sort of blueprint of, and I quote Whitman again, of re-examining all you have been told at school or church or in any book is really a invitation to not accept blindly what, what we've been told, but to think critically about them. And at the beneath all of this is that statement by Plato of the unexamined life is, is not worth li living. The idea of, of examining who we are, what we believe, our relationship to, to, to each other, even our relationship to the broader world are all important concerns. And the most striking thing to me is that for Whitman, one may be a poet without even writing a poem, without even uttering a word. In your silence yourself, you could be a type of poet. As he writes, dismiss whatever insults your own soul and your very flesh shall be a great poem and have the richest fluency, not only in its words, but in the silent lines of its lips and face and between the lashes of your eyes and in every motion and joint of your body. Quite, quite wonderful here. And just to add a, um, one more thought upon this, and then we shall move on, is that Whitman celebrates the body. And this is a very radical statement in the, in the 19th century. And, and these were once again moments in which Whitman himself was attempting to free poetry aw away from the abstract intellectualism of the time and bring it back, center it within the body itself. And on that note, Whitman in section 24 of Leaves of Grass offers many more profound statements. It's a, it's a very big, broad, muscular poem. And um, Whitman really attempts to capture this with, with his definition of the cosmos. Cosmos were it, the idea that Whitman had of the poet, someone who's open and generous, We'll, we'll dive a little bit more into that. But first, section 24 of Leaves of Grass. Walt Whitman, a cosmos of Manhattan the sun, turbulent, fleshy, sensual, eating, drinking, and breeding. No sentimentalist, no stander above men and women or apart from them. No more modest than immodest. Unscrew the locks from the doors Unscrew the doors themselves from their jams. Whoever degrades another degrades me. And whatever is said or done returns at last to me. Through the afflatus surging and surging, through the current and index, I speak the password primeval. I give the sign of democracy. By God, I will accept nothing which all cannot have their counterpart of on the same terms. Through me, 
many long, dumb voices. Voices of the interminable generations of prisoners and slaves. Voices of the disease and despairing and of thieves and dwarves. Voices of cycles of preparation and accretion and of the threads that connect the stars and of wombs and of the father stuff and of the rights of them the others are down upon or the deformed, trivial, flat, foolish, despise. For in the air, beetles rolling balls of dung through me, forbidden voices, voices of sexes and lust, voices veiled, and I remove the veil. Voices indecent by me clarified and transfigured, I do not press my fingers across my mouth. I keep as delicate around the bowels as around the head and heart. Copulation is no more rank to me than death is. I believe in the flesh and the appetites. Seeing, hearing, feeling are miracles and each part and tag of me is a miracle. Divine am I inside and out and I make holy whatever I touch or am touched from. The scent of these armpits, aroma finer than prayer, this head more than churches, Bibles, and all the creeds. There are many, many lovely things here and things that were troubling at the same time. Once again, Whitman is disrupting the genteel notion of poetry as being a strictly academic intellectual exercise. He is placing poetry within the realm of the body and the bodily, of the earthly and the earthy, it's a return to the idea of owning one's body. And if we think about the America of the 19th century, of the 1850s, and, we think, and we, if we think about the role of women, the role of persons of color, one's body sometimes didn't belong to oneself. And so claiming the body was one of those first ventures towards claiming yourself, your soul, of having freedom and so Whitman celebrates this. He celebrates the earthly beetles rolling balls of dung. Um, and he takes us to the stars as well. And so this is the range of, of Whitman in terms of getting down into the earth and taking us up to the stars. And there are other aspects here that remain true for poets to this very day. This very telling line here, through me long dumb voices, and this is um, the use of the word meaning silent. So the voices that have been silenced through Whitman speak. He's listening to us, those who are voiceless in society through him have a voice. Prisoners, slaves, the people who are, who are, who are ill, who are, who are suffering, they have a voice through him. And this raises Whitman to, to a great height here. This, this I is one that becomes almost um, a universal I in the sense that each reader of Whitman, by saying these words, you yourself begin to embody the vision that Whitman imagined. 